Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, that gives you difficulty, if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the math problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition of the revised GRE, happens to contain, in most cases, exactly the same problems and appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not, the new books uh, do not provide us uh, with uh, sufficient practice problems. And for that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 362. Turn to it please, page number 362, the very last exam in the book. And the series will end on day, on day number 470. Let's see what it has to say. Problem number third, problem number 12, the very first problem on the page that you see there, problem number 12. Now, as always, if I forget to remind you, you must do this thing on your own. I have told you this many a times. As soon as I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, you must pause the video immediately, solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds. You'll always get more out of it that way if you try it yourself first. Here's the problem, number 12. Number 12, when it was given in the real exam, only 38% of the people, only 38% of the people missed it. More than 60%, more than three-fifths had trouble. Uh, only 38% of the people got it right, I meant to say. Uh, three-fifths of the people missed it. Here's what it says. We are given an equation of a line. Equation of a line we are given, which is line L they call it. Line L is, equation of line L is, y equals to 8x over 9 plus 3. That's the equation that is given to us and they also give us a picture. So let's draw the picture on the blackboard here. And the picture looks something like this. We are told that this is P, this is R, and this is point O for origin. Here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis, I'm producing on the black. I'm, I'm reproducing on the blackboard the problem exactly as it appears in the pro in, in the exam. Nothing more, nothing less. Here's column A. In column A, we have distance P to O, and in column B, distance P to O. In column in column P to O, and in column B, we have distance R to O. Distance R O. I'll give you five seconds to to be able to pause and unpause the video. As I said, solve the problem yourself and then we'll do it together. Well, let's see what's going on. When they talk about the distance PO, this is the distance P to O from P to O. This is the distance they're talking about. This distance right here, it has a name. What do we call that distance? The point, the point where the line cuts the y-axis. This is the y-axis here. This is our line L. The point, the point P where the line L cuts the y-axis is called the y-intercept. So essentially they want us to compare the y-intercept, the y-intercept versus RO. RO is distance right here and there is your x, this, this, this is our x, this is our x-intercept right here because this is where, this is where the line cuts the x-axis. Line L cuts the x-axis at point R. This is our x-intercept. So essentially, they want us to compare the value of the two intercepts. That's all it is. So let's do it, shall we? 
Here is our equation. The equation that is given to us is y is equal to 8x plus 9, 8x over 9 plus 3. Finding the place where x is equal to 0, if you, if you substitute the value, if you, if you substitute the value of 0 for x, x is equal to 0 along y-axis, along the entire y-axis, the x, the x coordinate is 0 obviously. So if you put in 0 here, finding the y-intercept is very simple. Let's do that. So y is equal to 8 over 9 times 0, 8 over 9 times 0, which just going to be 0, plus a 3, which means it's 3. y equals 3. This distance we just found out, this distance we just found out is 3. y intercept is equal to 3. Let's find out what x intercept is, shall we? How do we find out the x intercept? Well, x intercept is where the y coordinate of the point is 0. At point r, at point r, it has some x value. It has some x value, obviously, and the y coordinate is 0. This is what we're trying to figure out. What is the x coordinate of point r? Well, at that point, y is equal to 0. So we take the same equation, and this time we, equal, we, we equate y to be 0. We make the y to be 0, and let's see what we find. Let's do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. So the equation that is given to us is y is equal to 8x over 9 plus 3, and we're going to make we're going to make y to be 0. We sub replace the y with 0. Multiply the entire equation by 9. If we multiply the entire equation by 9, what we find out is that this 9 drops out, which is the whole point of uh, which is the whole point we did it. 9 times 0 is still going to be 0. And this is just going to be 8x, and here we end up with 27. And therefore, 8x is going to be equal to negative 27, and x is going to be equal to negative 27 over 8. Negative 27 over 8. Now, this is the part, this is where the things get prickly. X is, x, this x actually represents the x, x coordinate of this point. And x coordinate of this point, we just found out, x coordinate of this point, we just found out is negative 27 over 8. But that's not what we put here. This represents the distance. This is the distance r to over. Distance, distances cannot be measured. Distances cannot be negative. When was the last time you when was the last time you got in your car and drove negative 5 miles? It'll be silly. Distances are always taken as absolute value. So if the distance when you do the calculation turns out to be negative 7. Well, the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. It just means you're going the other direction. That's all. Negative tells you that you're going, you're going in this direction. But the distance from 0 to r is 27 over 8. That's what I'm trying to make you understand. It, it, it's the absolute value of 27 over 8. This is the absolute value of 27 over 8, which is 27 over 8. We know, we know, that, we know that 27 over 9, we know that 27 over 9 is 3. 27 over 9 is 3, therefore 27 over 8, since we're dividing the 27 by a smaller number, this quantity has to be bigger than that quantity. 27 over 8 has to be bigger than 27 over 9. The answer is B. The answer is B. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 13. Number 13. Whenever you're comparing distances, always remember, distances can never be negative. Distances have to be positive. Number 13, when it appeared in the exam, 34% of the people, 34% of the people got it right. Oh, the number 12 was 38%, so this is even lower. 34%, about two-thirds of the people who took the exam missed it. Here's what we are, here's what we are told. We are told that uh, 0, we are told that 0 is more than A and A is more than B. Again, exactly as it, as it appears in the exam, as I told you before, nothing more, nothing else. And that is all, and that is all they tell us. The two quantities they want us to compare, the two quantities they want us to compare are Let's put them here. We're done with all of this thing. We're not going to obviously leave it there all the time. The quantities that, we can't be, that we're being asked to compare is AB versus AB whole squared. AB versus AB whole squared. So here's the problem. Here's the demarcation so we can keep them separate. I want you to pause the video, 
I want you to solve the problem yourself one more time. This is what the problem says. We are told, we are told that zero, zero is greater than A and A in turn is greater than B. What we are being asked to compare is A times B versus A times B whole squared. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video, solve the problem yourself as always, and then compare your work against the work we'll do together in a few seconds time. Okay, here we go. Well, first thing first, first thing first, first thing what I'm going to do is erase everything from the previous problem. We don't need, we don't need any of this now. And the stuff that they want us to compare, let's put them on the side here so that we can, we can have more room here. Column A and column B. AB versus A times B whole squared. First thing first, we are told, we are told that zero is more than A, which is more than B. I find it very awkward. It's, it's very awkward to go around saying that zero is more than A. When somebody tells you that zero is more than A, when someone tells us that zero is more than A, it is not the zero that we are interested in. It is not the zero that we are interested in. I could care less whether or not zero is more than A. When you tell me that zero is more than A, what I should be hearing is that A is less than zero. A would have to be less than zero if zero is more than A. So let's write it in a way that makes it easier for us to see. So what this tells us is that if A is more than B, then B would have to be less than A. Similarly, if A is, if zero is more than A, if zero is more than A, then A would have to be less than zero. In other words, both, both A and B are negative. Both A and B are negative. That's, the, that's what, we, what we get out of it. Now, given the fact that they are both negative, now if you look at A times B, A times B, A is negative and B is negative because they are both, because they are both less than zero. If A is negative and B is negative, then their product would have to be positive. Their product would have to be positive. So, that's something that we have to keep in mind. The product is positive. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm taking too long. I'm going I'm to pick up speed now. Now we start our solution here. Here we have a times b. Now, why is this important? Why is it why is this why is it important for us to establish that their product is positive? Why is, why was this important for us to establish that? You will see you will see the significance of that in the next five seconds. Here we have a b, and in, in this column we have a b times a b. Now, watch what happens. Watch what happens. Two columns, column A, column B. Would you agree that three is more than four? Of course you would agree. Why wouldn't you agree? You're not insane. Three is, oh, what the hell? Perhaps it is I who is insane. Three is less than A, three is less than four. Would you agree to that? Of course you would agree to it. Three is less than four. Why wouldn't you? Right, you're not insane. What if we were to multiply, what if we were to multiply 3 by 2, and what if we multiply 4 by 2? Would you still agree, would you still agree that 2 times 3 is less than 4 times 2? Of course, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 is still less than 8. But what if we were to multiply both sides of the, what if we were to multiply both columns by a negative 2? If you were to multiply both columns by a negative 2, then what we find here now is negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and negative 6 is no longer less than negative 8. This inequality that was given to us in the, in the original problem, if the, if the correct answer, if the correct answer here, 3 is less than 4, in which case the correct answer would have been B. But if you end up multiplying both columns by a negative number, you're going to end up saying that answer is A. Answer was B, 4 was more than 3. What I'm trying to tell you, what, what, what we're trying to understand here is that when we, are, when we are manipulating the two quantities in the two columns in the quantitative comparison question, one more time, in the quantitative comparison questions, when, you, when we are manipulating the two quantities in the two columns, we can multiply or divide both columns by a positive quantity. We can multiply both columns by the same positive quantity. We can divide both columns by the same positive quantity. 
but we are not allowed to multiply or divide the two columns by a negative number because it reverses multiplying the two columns by a negative number as you can see reverses the direction of the inequality we cannot do that but we know here here's here's the deal but we already know that a times b is positive right here zero is more than a which means a is less than zero and a is more than b which means b is less than a b is less than a and a is less than zero which means both a and b are negative if both a and b are negative then a times b a times b has to be negative times negative which is going to equal to some positive quantity which is more than zero now that we know that a times b is a positive quantity we can divide both columns by a times b which is exactly what we're going to do here let's divide both columns by a times b so this ab drops out this ab drops out we end up with one versus ab the question that we're dealing with now is one versus ab we are almost there let's 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 con continue i need the room i need a lot of room so we can have we're going to have to erase a lot of stuff here. We are done with all of this thing. I'm going to erase all of that as well. And let's see what happens. If, so it, we're going to pick up our story from here. 1 versus AB. If it turns out, and we know that they are both negative. We know that A is less than 0 and we know that B is less than 0. That we do know. We, we, just, we just did that. If it turns out, if both, if both A and B, if it turns out that they are both, if they are both fractions, if they are both fractions, for example, for example, here's the situation. Here's our zero. Here's a here's a negative one. Let's say let's say negative half, negative half, and a negative quarter. Negative half and a negative quarter. Remember, our our, our, our situation was. What was the situation? I, I forgot now. The situation was b is less than a, which is less than zero b is less than a b is less than a then a, b would have to be this quantity and a would have to be this quantity not that it matters not that it matters it makes no difference at all even if i were to put that in a, in a, in a different order in a reverse order by mistake it wouldn't have mattered because we're looking there we're, we're looking at their product so whether we do negative half times negative quarter or negative quarter times negative half it wouldn't matter the point is that if they're both fractions then negative half rather a a times b a times b we can do it here a times b a is negative half negative quarter versus a negative half which is going to be which is going to be positive 8 positive 1 8 and positive 1 8 positive 1 8 positive 1 8 is less than 1 in this case the answer is going to be a in this case the answer is going to be a but on the other hand if they are both if they are both fractions if they are both fractions, the answer is going to be A. If, if it turns out that they are, if they are not, if they are not, if they are not both fractions, they both have to be fractions. If they are not both fractions, you will find that the answer is not going to be A. If they are both fractions, the answer is A. answer is going to be A. If they are not both fractions, they have to be both fractions. If they are not both fractions, the answer will not be A. In this case it was A, here it is not A, therefore the answer to this problem is D. Therefore the answer to this problem is D. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to show you two scenarios where they are not both fractions. Even if one of them is fraction, it's not enough. They both have to be fraction. For example, for example, we know that A, we, 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 we have A times B. So we have column A is 1 column B we have A times B what happens if A happens to be I forgot again which one was bigger which one is smaller for Christ's sake like I said it really doesn't matter we are multiplying them uh, B was less than A which was less than A so how about if B is negative 3 and A is negative 1 third as you can see negative 1 third is more than negative 3 isn't it negative 1 third is more than negative 3 so here A would be negative 1 third B would be negative 3, negative 1 third and negative 3 will just give us positive 1. And here is also one, answer is C. Before the answer was A, now the answer is C. But this part that we are doing here, this part that we are doing here, we would not do this in the real exam. This is actually a waste of time, we are doing it only for learning purposes. In the real exam, we don't actually sit there and analyze something to death. We do it here, we take 10 minutes to do a problem because we are learning right now. 
in a real exam, the thinking process, the logic, the rationale has to come like that. We just have to think about it. We don't have to actually do it out. We just have to realize that if they are both fractions, then the product is going to be fractions. Fraction times fraction is going to be fraction, in which case it's going to be less than one. If it turns out that they are, if they are not both fractions, the answer is not going to be less than one. It's going to be either equal to one or more than one. Right here, it's equal to one. If they happen to be the reciprocal of each other. On the other hand, on the other hand, so here the answer is C before the answer was A. I'm going to show you one more scenario. What, what if, I, what if A is negative 2 and this is negative 10? B is negative 10 and A is negative 2, in which case A times B, in which case A times B. So in this scenario, the answer was C. In this scenario, we will have A, which is negative 2, and B, which is negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 2 is going to be positive 20, and positive 20 is more than 1. Now the answer is B. Before the answer was A, then it became C, now it's B. But we don't have to go into this much detail, I'm, 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 I'm repeating myself right now, we don't have to go into this much detail, we simply have to realize in a matter of fractions that if they are both fractions, the answer is going to be A, if they are not both fractions, the answer is not going to be here, right here, this is, where I, this is where we show that the answer is not going to be A, right here, we write down A and we cross it out, the answer is not going to be A, in this case it is A, here it is not, that's all we have to understand, and as long as it's not A, before it was A and now it is not, therefore the answer is D. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.